Hey guys, welcome back to 90s Obscurity. I have Danielle back again. So she is going to be a recurring co-host here because she is awesome with 90s music. So just to explain to people what I do on this show, because I don't think I actually explained this last time, is basically, you know, when I have someone on the show that's hosting with me, I have them pick the songs and then we will talk about it. So for anyone watching this on video on Spotify, you can't, we can't play the full songs, but you will get to watch us. Um, I always encourage the audio because that's kind of the point of the show is we're trying to turn people on to good music. So if you want to hear the songs, which I highly recommend, definitely listen to the audio version in Spotify. The video version will, it will say video in front of it so that you'll know. So hi, Danielle. How are you? Good. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I listen to uh, listen to your songs. It's so funny. Like Danielle will pick the songs, and half of them I love, and half of them I either don't know or I hate. So, <laughs> so we will talk about that today. Mm -hmm. um, I I like to do the order of my favorite songs, so we can dev you know for sake of time, just to make sure we get all the all the good ones in. So I have to start with whole Jennifer's body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that you picked that. It's my favorite whole song of all time. Is it yours too? It, it is. It, it is because of the chorus. It's just like, and it just rocks so hard. And it's so dark. <laughs> you know, like when you're not an angry teenager and you're an adult and you listen to it, you're like, whoa, that's a, some scary uh, subjects there. You know what I mean? Like, um, I know. Well, it's so funny. So I'm not a lyric person, clearly, because I just listen to songs and I love the melody. <laughs> And, you know, sometimes then you get older and you listen to the lyrics back and you go, oh, yeah, okay. Like that's, I didn't realize that's what that song was about. Do you remember when, <laughs> my God, this is terrible. There was a reggae song that was on the radio when we were probably like 10. It was that song like, girl, I want to make you sweat. Oh yeah. Sweat till you can't. Yeah. Like, do, do you hear the lyrics know, to that terrible, song? Terrible songs that we were, I want to lick you up and down. Yeah. Hey, stop. <laughs> It's, and we're like in fifth grade, like singing these, these are horrible songs for kids. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Precisely fifth grade. And the crazy thing about that inner circle song, like he says, if you cry, I'm going to push it some more. And I was like, oh my God. And I remember I was in the fifth grade and listening to it. And my stepfather, he goes, Rachel, I don't like the lyrics to this song. <laughs> and he changed it. And I, I didn't know like what he was talking about. And I listened to it now and I'm like, that was the most inappropriate song, but it was so catchy, oh, you know, right. and like. Yeah. You're young and you don't listen to it. So Jennifer's body, it's so funny because I actually looked up, I was looking up today to see if it had a, has a music video. It doesn't. But I also was like, it's so weird that they came out with that movie, Jennifer's body with Megan Fox and this song isn't in it. And I'm I think that's a point of contention. I didn't get into it too. I've been so busy, but I didn't get into it too much, but I think Courtney Love's kind of mad about that. Yes. I think she's a little miffed about it or something because she allowed them to use the title Jennifer's Body, but then they didn't even use oh. something like that. I know I should have did a little more research on it, but yeah. Well, I did look it up and it. I, I actually don't think she even gave them permission to use the title. Oh. I think she was, I really? think it came out. Yeah. I, that, I just, all I read was that she was mad that they didn't even give her, like, they didn't use the song. They didn't give her any credit to that title, nothing, you know? So it's oh. like, people just think that that's a movie and they have no idea that there, there's a song that is called that from the nineties, you know? So I'm like, it was kind of a jerk move. Yeah. I and you know, I, I see, I read it. I read it that it, she gave him permission. For, I don't know. Well, we okay. have to look it up. But yeah, 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 yeah. I know. I know. She could have. Speaking of songs that have uh, funny, so, topics or whatever they're they're talking about yeah. stutter you know how we love that song going back to the last yes episode. do you know what that song's about no i knew and i totally forgot it's about a guy what? who can't get it up that's what that song's about is it the way really you do? <laughs> when i'm down on your back and it, when they say uh, am I just, uh, am I much too much for you? It's about yeah. who can't get it up. <laughs> and I totally forgot about that. And I'm like, how did I forget about that when we were talking about, it? I knew that the whole time. Cause I remember being like, what is stutter about? But yeah, it's about a guy who, uh, and we had no idea. We just thought it was a rocking song, you know? Yeah. And I never knew that, but also it's funny when I was looking up Jennifer's body, everyone thinks and it, it could be, I there's, it's not like confirmed or denied, but everyone thinks it's about the girl 
that there was actually a Lifetime movie that I watched. It's called Girl in a Box. And it's the, this couple that kidnapped a girl and they kept her in a box under the bed for seven years. God, that is and, so scary. That is so I know. scary. I can't even imagine. Me- because remember in the lyric, she says he keeps her in a box by the bed. Yeah. Alive, but just barely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so people think it's about that. And I, and this is a true story. This happened in 1977. A girl was kidnapped by this couple and eventually she escaped, but they like brainwashed her. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. So I know I like, I accidentally did research this morning. I didn't mean to, I was just seeing if it had a music video and I was like, Oh, okay. Well now I have more to say about the song. I was just, I was just going to be like, I love the song. It's great. It's so good. It rocks so hard. I love the chorus. I love the guitars. And it just, yeah, it's a great song, but then when you know, I guess. <laughs> years later you're listening, you're like, "Damn, that's kind of dark." <laughs> like, I know. Yeah. Well, in this is, you know, another reason why I started the show because so many people I feel like don't know the good songs by these '90s bands, right? Like, sure, Doll Parts was okay, like it was on the it's radio, not my you know. Either I agree with you there. There's so many. No. There's so many great songs on that album. That album is a banger from beginning to end. And for an angry yes. teenager, how could you not love Courtney Love just ripping into everybody about everything and do and just she rocks so hard. She is amazing. You know what I'm I know. Saying? It's like she's amazing. But yeah, doll parts, nah. But Jennifer is such a rocking song, like from beginning, beginning it, to end. I love it. It's so good. And I know, I don't understand, because that was a big thing with the 90s, where a lot of these bands' popular songs is, like, their worst song. Uh-huh. Like, I loved I loved the Toadies growing up, and, like, Possum Kingdom was, like, the worst song on that album. Like, they have this song, Tyler, that it's, like, one of the best songs ever written. Never on the radio. No. They'll always play it live, but I'm, like, that's why I was, like, I need to start a show where we actually play the good songs yes. by these bands. Because I'm, like, rage. the ra- <laughs> I know. <laughs> Radio's not helping them. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Radio's not doing them justice. Uh, but la- last thing I want to say before we play it is I feel like that album lived through this. It was so good. Right. And and I, I forgot to say this too, but guys, we're doing an early 90s edition part two today where all of the songs, I know, <laughs> I, I forgot too. <laughs> so basically every one of these shows, I have a theme. And uh, the last time Danielle and I did the show, we did early 90s edition and we played all songs from basically 90 to like 93. And then all the songs today are from uh, like 93 and 94 when I looked it up. But the thing with Live Through This was I feel like that was Hole's best album. And then they kind of did what Garbage did where their albums after that were like more pop and they weren't as angry. And I don't think it was as good, right? No fun when you're not angry. (laughs) No fun. I know, like they... (laughs) Because I see that happen with these bands where they come out with these first albums, like even newer bands too, and they're and they're kind of dark and they're kind of depressing. But that's their sweet spot. That's what they're good at. And then they try to. I think their labels are like, yeah. "We got to get happy," I you know. Say that they're like, "Now we need to, you need a hit," you know, like you need to. Yeah, we need to get you know the the kids and the you know the whatever. Yeah. But it's, but it's not what they're about. No. And I feel like they just lose their actual fans because mm-hmm. they try to change the sound. And I feel like Hole kind of did that after this when they did Celebrity Skin and it was really poppy. Mm-hmm. And Garbage, too. Like, that Garbage first album was so angry. And then she kind of got all happy with, like, the 2.0 and Special and, you know, those more upbeat what songs. This? Yeah. No, oh, Shirley, go get, dumped, go get dumped again. Yeah. All right? <laughs> yeah, like, we want to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, I want to talk about Danielle's second choice of a song, which is Girls and Boys by Blur, which, Danielle, I didn't know this was a 90s song. Isn't that crazy? What did you think it was? Because I didn't actually discover it until, honest to God, like the late 2000s. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. That was uh, cause I song two, like everybody knew who Blur was after song two. So, th- okay, makes sense. And you know what's funny is I didn't even realize that that song was called Song 2 until yesterday <laughs> when I was when I was looking these up. It was just like the woohoo song. I don't I, I <laughs> Ooh, yeah, I know. I feel, You're right. I feel like I didn't mm-hmm. I feel like I didn't even know that it had a title. Yeah, Song 2. And uh, like I know. And then I looked it up and I was like it's called Song 2. Like that's their Oh, it is. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah, I discovered this song. Um, Yeah, I think it came out, I looked it up. It was like, I want to say 93 or 94. I think all of these songs were generally from that. Um, that, You know what's funny though, is that's not a song I would think you would like. Oh, so you want the story behind that? So Cousin Heather, who we spoke about last time, had a gay BFF, Gary, 
And I remember yeah. he was over my aunt's house and he had the album Park Life. And I was looking at the, you know, the album and I said, can I listen to this? And he's looking at me like a sixth grader and he's like, I don't think you're going to like it. And I was just like, but can I listen to it? He's like, go ahead. So yeah. I took it in my bedroom or whatever. And I put in, you know, the song and um, <clears throat> I put in the album and I, the first song is Girls and Boys. And I was like, oh my God, this is awesome on Park Life. I was just like, it was so catchy. And it was just, and that was kind of like, oh, I think I know why Gary likes this song. <laughs> You know, girls who like boys, who like boys, who like <laughs> like everybody to be able to be loved, you know, like I'm like, get it now. But it was so, it was so good. I was just like, oh, I like this. And I listened to the rest of it. To be honest, you know, at my sixth grade brain kind of wasn't into anything else on that album. And I okay. actually haven't revisited it in a long time. I just remember, oh, I love that Blur song. And the other great thing about I want to talk a little bit about is Damon Albarn. Are you familiar with him at all? No. So he's amazing. He's another underrated like artist. So you're who, with, who is he? He's the singer. Um, a blur. Mm -hmm. You're familiar okay. with gorillas, right? Mm -hmm. so gorillas is his other project. So what he oh. did is just recruited a bunch of musicians. They actually didn't really get together. They just played their parts and came, came together and did gorillas and everybody loved gorillas. Yeah. And then after Gorillaz, he did this <laughs> other project called The Good, The Bad, and The Queen, which is, oh, my God, amazing in, like, early 2000s. Beautiful, beautiful songs. Like, he he is so talented, and he's so good at what he does. I And back to Girls and Boys, the funny thing was Tom York actually said uh, he wishes he came up with that song. He, he, he got mad at Damon, like, I can't, you know, like, oh, you, you know. SOB. <laughs> like I, I came up with that song. Because it is. It's it's an excellent pop song. It's just it's perfect. It is. And um That's yeah. That's funny. Be mm -hmm. Well, it's funny because Tom York almost didn't put high and dry on the bends because he thought it was like too catchy. You know, because he's he's kind of more obscure. Right? So that Wow. <laughs> is that, yeah. Well, maybe that's why, because he's like, that's an actual like upbeat pop song. And I just, you know, if he thinks high and dry is too, you know catchy maybe he just knew that's a level to be achieved you know <laughs> like yeah but but like high and dry was the hit off of that yeah, album you know album. and so i so i think he listened to it and was like you know because tom york is tom york right mm -hmm. like he does his own thing he doesn't mm -hmm. want to commercialize anything and so i feel like he probably didn't want to hit on that and he was probably like oh this is the one they're gonna play in the radio so yeah, yeah. i'm gonna mix that one you know yeah. so that surprises me yeah. that he would like like a poppy song yeah, no, Damon Albarn's excellent. That's what it's so. I guess that's part of like Britpop. I guess Blur was like this whole like Britpop, Britpop movement, and you know, then he segued into Gorillas, which is awesome. I mean, Gorillas has yeah. one of the best dance song. He's super talented. He's a he's a genius. Yeah, I, and you I, know, he actually got himself in a lot of trouble because he said Taylor Swift doesn't write her own songs. So, oh, yeah. One thing you can't talk smack about a pop star like i don't know what people are ever gonna learn this but you just can't do it even you know right but the funny thing is i guess she's being sued now over shake it off someone saying she stole her their lyrics or, i don't know whatever it's it, it is what it is but yeah he got himself in trouble for saying that he said she didn't she doesn't write her own songs and then he apologized oh. but yeah he, so is, mm -hmm. is is he the singer of the gorillas it's a collaboration, so yes and no. I guess some he sings in some songs and then um, mm -hmm. not all of them. It, he just pretty much pulled a bunch of musicians together, and I had them all written down, and I don't know where I did with them. So it's it's a oh, it's wow a musicians, yeah. And then it's I guess so he, funny. Um, was it the good, the bad, and the queen? Don't quote me. I think he got okay. with Danger Mouse to do the good, the bad, and the queen. I could be wrong okay. though. Maybe I'm screwing that up with something else. But yeah, okay. No, he's he's what? amazing. And he's kind of hot. Let's, oh, all right. Well, guys, after we log off, I'm going to go <laughs> check his Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> Slide into those DMs. <laughs> um, it's it's so funny how like how certain bands are in other bands and you have no idea. So no one knows this, but Pink has a side acoustic project with a singer called Dallas Green. Did you go to that show with me, the City and Color show at the yes, Middle I East? Yes, I did. I remember that, yeah. So that singer, I'm not going to tell this story, but I met him out here in 
it was a weird experience. Oh, so, well, well, we'll talk about that offline, guys. Okay. But um, <laughs> so Dallas Green is the singer. So he was in a punk band in Canada called Alexis on Fire. Mm-hmm. And then he started City in Color, which was his acoustic side project, which was beautiful. I mean, his voice sounded like Jeff Buckley, like he was mm-hmm. amazing. Mm-hmm. And so no one knows this, but he has this side project with Pink called You and Me. And it is one of the best albums ever. I love it so much. And I just, I'm like, more people need to know this. And do you remember that song? I think it was from the 90s. No Ordinary Love. Mm-hmm. So they do a cover of No Ordinary Love. Do you remember that song? I think it was Sade. Yeah. This is No Ordinary Love from yeah. the 90s. Mm-hmm. It is like hauntingly beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's just him in pink and I think a piano. It's in their, like their harmonies together are incredible. You know who else and, did a, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, go ahead. So you know who else did a very good cover of that same song? Um, hmm. Are you familiar with Twin Shadow? No. So Twin Shadow is George Lewis Jr. He actually lived in Boston. Twin Shadow you would love. Um, okay. But he was dating uh, Zoe Kravitz. And they toured together <gasps> this was years ago, and those two covered that song, and it was it was excellent. Yeah, I didn't I didn't even know she sings. Oh, yeah. She has a band. She was touring. Oh. She was. I mean, that was I don't know, maybe ten years ago now, but yeah, Twin Shadow, you would enjoy. I know you would. But okay. I, yeah, and he's really talented, George. I, and you know what's funny now that I have the braces, but when I ran into him, I'm like, I don't. I was backstage <laughs> at the show, and I was like, I don't think you'll recognize me. And he goes, yeah, I do. I remember those teeth. <laughs> this was before your braces? And he goes, and then my friend goes, they're cute. And he goes, they are. I was like, oh, okay. Well, too bad, George. <laughs> I'm fixing them. Well, he might. We call them We call them petite teeth. And I think they're cute, too. Like when people have little teeth. Yeah. Like, because you have smaller teeth. Like Alicia Silverstone has, yeah. has we call them petite they're teeth. Small, and they're just, they're, they're just not, you can't see them. They look small because of the angle. Yeah. <laughs> You're not. Smart. You're gonna get the braces off and have these big teeth, yeah. and we're gonna be like, "Whoa!" <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so funny. You mentioned that song because I remember those two covered that. That and yeah, it was uh, it was Ooh. an interesting oh. show. And now you're gonna have to check them out. You'll like them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. And you, you'll have to check out you and me too. It's, yeah. it's very slow. It's very slow acoustic, but it's, their voices together are just beautiful. Yeah. I have another surprise song for Danielle. I don't know if you're gonna. I don't know if you're gonna get this one, Probably. but. <laughs> I know. I would be surprised, but you're going to love it. All right. I'm going to paint a picture for you. So we are driving through Northern California, you and I. Grandma's driving. Yes. We're filming. The, uh, it was like beautiful wine country. There's mountains in the background. And you watched the video back and you said, I can't believe this song is playing in the background because it went so perfectly with just like the beautiful nature ambiance in the background. Like you loved it. You watched it a million times because you loved that that song was playing. I'll give you a hint. It's a female artist from the 90s um, and it's a slow song. Mazzy Star. Yes! (laughs) And I checked. Faded and I checked it, and I probably mm-hmm. did. You're saying I watched it over and over with the scenery or something? Oh, of course I did. Mm-hmm. That sounds yeah. absolutely yeah. Of course I did that because because you kept watching it. And you were like, I love that Mazzy Star is playing in the background because you like you were photographing the mountains and it was so pretty. Um, and I checked, and it's early '90s. It was '93 because I thought of this last night. I was like, we should play that that song. Oh my god, thank you. How did I? How I know. Did I skip that completely. That was a great song from the early '90s. You're right. Well, but you know, you know, it's crazy too. And I'm sure you know this. I didn't. Um, I was looking up stuff for the Instagram, which guys, if you want to follow the Instagram, it's at 90s Obscurity. I post a lot of 90s throwbacks. So I was looking up like pictures of Mazzy Star and I'm like, why is it two people? Yeah. Her name isn't Mazzy Star. That's the name of the band. I didn't yeah. know. I, I, didn't know. I, thought, I thought the singer's name was Mazzy Star and she was a solo female artist. I know. <laughs> No, her name is Hope Sandoval. Thank you. Yes. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> oh my goodness. I know. So I I do like I do usually like to play the obscure songs on the show, but I feel like that one's so good and everyone loves it. And yeah. You know, if if younger people are listening to this, they may not know that song, right? Um because I need feel like to. it was more of Yeah. Okay. Next. I want to talk about Liz Fair. Yes. It's so funny. 
so many people have wanted to play the song on my show and <laughs> good <laughs> i know and the, well the I, I just never got into her i just was never into her but the thing with this song is i love the guitar part when it's like wow 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 my friend Paul, who's in a band, I'm like, what is that called? How did they, how does she do that? He's like, I don't know. It's like a wah pedal. I'm, I'm like a wah pedal <laughs> talking to a non-musician. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I don't know what it is, but that guitar effect is so awesome. And you know, what's funny you say that is there's a song that you turned me on to. Do you remember when we were driving cross country and you played that Grizzly Bear album over <laughs> and over and over, right? And I loved Ready Abel. Like every time that came on, I was like, oh, it's this song again. And I, I'll tell you, I saw them live a couple of years ago oh, at I a festival. But that song live isn't the same. No. Because, and I did the same thing you did where I was like, what, what is that effect? When yeah. all of a sudden it's like, it almost sounds like an organ. Yeah. And I, same thing, and a musician guy was like, that's just the guitar. He's doing something crazy with yeah, it. Yeah, like, nobody know. knows. It's like, it's so unique to that musician. They just find it and they, they find this cool effect. They, they incorporate it into the song and like, nobody knows what it is. And it's, it's just so unique to them. And I love when they do stuff like that. I love that unique <laughs> sounds that any musician comes up with. Yeah. And I, do, I just think it's so beautiful. Like I have a, I have a yoga playlist with all of, you know, my like Florence and the machine, you know, my Zen, uh, my Zen songs. Yeah. And that, that's like the number of the big song on it. Yeah, Cause it's always just like, oh, just puts me in a, a great mood. But yeah. so Liz, so Liz Bear Supernova, mm -hmm. this is the song we're talking about guys. Yeah. I love the guitar parts, but I don't really like the singing parts to it. That song is so good. And I love the singing parts because that is an ode to a man that is just perfect. And I, it's been a long time and I, I, since I've identified with that song. Let's just be real. But it is, I don't know if I ever have, like an ode to the perfect man, you know, especially when she says he F Fs like a volcano and, and he's sure. talking to her and, you know, his eyelashes sparkle, a gilded grasp. And it is just literally just someone talking about like how you're just electrified by another person. And I love it. And I think it just huh. works so hard with that crazy effect and everything. And it's just, it's a brilliant song, but again, it's like, you know, it's just, it's just being so, you know, enthralled by somebody. And I'm like, yeah, it's a great song. I mean, I, I can't really identify right now. <laughs> But it's, it's an amazing song, I think, you know? Yeah, that's so, that's, I don't know. I just don't, I didn't love the melody to it. Mm -hmm. It was almost like how I felt when we talked about Dinosaur Jr., where I was like, I liked the guitar, like the guitar when it got loud. But then when he started singing, I was just like, I wasn't that into the melody piece mm -hmm. of it. But but people love this song, guys, and they love Liz Fair. Do you have anything else to say about Liz Fair? Because I know nothing about her. Uh, so the only thing I can really say is I think that album, well, okay. From what I understand is that she didn't even really want to be a star or anything. She just recorded some demos oh. and someone got their hands on it. And then she, she just got picked up. Like she was just playing places and, and things like that. She, she's kind of like an accidental star, but then huh. I think her label kind of got a hold of her and just, they... I don't know. Kind of like we were talking about before. They kind of sunk their claws yeah. in her and it just wasn't the same. So I think Whip's uh, you know, a really good album. I think she had one previous to that, maybe two previous to that. And then it was just kind of like, eh, what's going on with Liz Fair? You know what I mean? I know. Because the I didn't even realize that she sang It's a Newer Song, but that terrible, like, why can't I breathe whenever I think about you? You ever heard that one? I think so, but yeah, it, it it just was never the same. I think it was inauthentic and it wasn't her and it, she just kind of went, she went along there, whatever they were guiding her to do and it just kind of made everything go. Eh. Yeah. No, so artists who are listening to this show Don't do not do change. <laughs> They're like, okay, Don't. you pass up millions and <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean what do you well, do? Like, I, I mean, the thing is now, really, you know, I think it was a different time back then, but yeah. nowadays it's like you guys don't, you don't need that the label that much. Look at look at Radiohead and Nine Inch Nails and these big bands that are putting out their own music. You know what? Who's another really good example of that is Whitey. That's another band I'll suggest to you. I love Whitey. Okay. That dude. I think he puts everything out on himself. I think he has like no label or or his own label or something. But he's a genius, and he, yeah, he stays true to himself. But his music is 
reflective of that. It's it's awesome. You know what I mean? No one's telling him yeah. to do, do what he's doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. So guys, don't sell out. If you have a good first album and it's dark, stay dark and yeah. release it. Your, release it yourself if your label is trying to push you to be happy because mm -hmm. no one wants happy music. Guys. No, we want. You know, it's like I feel like people listen to music because you want to not feel alone and you want to be validated in your emotions, mm -hmm. right? And you want to feel like other people are feeling what you feel. So, I mean, you know, not to say like a good. Girls and Boys by Blur isn't isn't good. I mean, you know, happy stuff is good too, but also there's just some artists that are great with the sadder songs, you yeah. know, and, and and we need that as a society. That's so. true. All right. So Tori Amos, this is so funny that you sent this to me. I was like, who is BT? I've never All right. So the song that Danielle sent me is called This is obscure. Blues. So obscure. I was like, all right, I like as of late. Yeah. Yeah, I because I was like, okay, I've never heard of this. But so Danielle sends me this song that she wants to play today. It's called Blue Skies by a band by the name of BT, and they're featuring Tori Amos. So she's singing on the track. I looked up to see if it has a music video. It does. And actually, a lot of people, there was like over 100 comments of people like, this is my favorite song from the 90s. I work out to this song at the gym. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know the song. Like, it's, it is, how did you find it? Okay, so, you know my friend Alicia, right? Yeah. This was our favorite song when we were in like seventh grade. I'm telling you, we loved this song so much. And they used to play it on Dun Dun Dun, BRU. So, and another side okay. note about BRU, I'm reading uh, Remain in Love by Chris France, the drummer of Talking Heads. And he was oh. saying in the 70s, early 70s, uh, you know, because they were RISD students in Rhode Island, he was saying how BRU played the latest stuff. And I was like, even then. So, yeah. Anyways, this song used to play on BRU and we loved it because it's kind of techno and then they have... Tori Amos's voice on it, you know, her, her lyrics. But the crazy thing about it is that it's not even her singing. I guess she sang some other song and the, the dude from BT like spliced up her lyrics to make her say blue skies. She's not even saying it. And now when I listen to it, I'm like, what the hell is she saying? so nonsensical that I'm like, I'm like you, I'm not really a lyric person. I like melodies and beats and, you know, things like that over. So just listening to it now, I'm just like, none of that makes sense. I just like that. It was kind of like a really cool, like, um, electronic sounding song with Tori Amos over it. And I love like yeah. a little techno breakdown of it where it's just like the song kind of like breaks down and she says something about a lullaby. I don't know. But yeah, that's a very obscure song. <laughs> that's one that. Well, <clears throat> go ahead. You know what's funny? It, you know what's funny? You say that is when I listened to it, my first thought was this sounds like two different songs are playing in the same room. Yes, like that was what I thought. I was like, I, I had to actually check my computer because I was like, is, is <laughs> my phone is my phone playing something else at the same time? And I'm like, no, this is this is just yeah. one song. Yeah. So yeah, it's almost like he took two songs and put them together. Um, I, well, I was going to say two things real quick, just for anyone who hasn't listened to our previous episode. Um, WBRU is a radio station mm -hmm. on the East Coast that we listened to growing up that played a lot of songs that we know now that I think other parts of the world don't know, right? Because they did play like kind of the some semi obscure. <laughs> Since the yeah. and beyond. Like, yeah. Right. And also, it's funny you mentioned the Talking Heads. I just, my friend Charlie made a 90s, like a crazy 90s playlist on Spotify. It has like thousands of songs. And I discovered that the, remember the Cardigans? I, I, me, they're coming me. Up. Uh, For me, at least. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Love, love them. I know you're not going to play Love Fool. So um, <laughs> they, they covered Burning Down the House oh, by the Talking Heads. And it's, it's amazing. I think it's amazing. There's a, but there's another guy singing with her by the name of Tom Jones. And I've been meaning to look him up because I have no idea who he is. Do you Not know who he is? Not unusual to be loved by anyone. Is that who it is? I'll die. I'll die if that's yeah. who it is. It might be because it sounds like that voice. Because <laughs> it's it's like this. But it's, but it's good. Like, it's a good cover. Because that's hilarious. Like, how would... For, okay, so Talking Heads is like this art band. And then you got the Cardigans, which is like I think they're Swedish, or and then Talking yeah. Jones. What the? 
That's crazy. <laughs> I know we'll play we'll play it on a different episode. I'll see if you like it. Oh but, my gosh. Um, and Then and then we can I talk about your <laughs> yeah. Well, well, what made me? My mom used to crank that song so loud that it shook the floor when I was like four years old. Like that song used to. It was. And I <laughs> she was literally burning down the house. <laughs> Seriously, it was like, even from the beginning with the effects and then like the the drums and like watch out dun, dun. it just shook the whole house like yeah and it's and it's funny because talking heads is one of those bands that i didn't love growing up and i love now i think and you know what's in just a couple of years ago actually because my brother is a musician and he gets me into stuff sometimes that i normally don't listen to and he just became obsessed with the talking heads a few years ago in that video <laughs> yeah in the, the video where he's in the big like the fat suit yes and he, like, all, I don't know, ever since, and then we went, my brother and I went and saw a Talking Heads cover band that plays in the South Shore, like they were touring and they, they and the guy wears the fat suit too. And it was like, they were That's so good. And I, Rachel, it's just a big suit. <laughs> I know. Big... My brother, my brother calls it a fat suit. So I just call it that. But yeah, it's, yeah. It, but it gets bigger and bigger as the show progresses. Like, it's just, <laughs> he's such a weird, David's, a, awesome. David Burns a weird guy. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll have to do, we'll have to play that cover on a different show and uh, I'll see, I'll see what you think of, of it. You're going to be like, what the heck? No, I sometimes um, really like covers. Like there's a lot of really, we should just do covers, a show with just covers that we like someday. Cause yeah. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, there's some really good covers that I love that I will all, you know, stand by all day. Some are better than the, um, the original, like Baker street. I think Foo Fighters yeah. Baker street is way better than the original Baker street. Like. Didn't, didn't even know they covered it. That's crazy. We got more, we got more content. Oh my God. And I, and I've, I've played this song twice already on the show and I will play it again. Cause I'm obsessed with it. So on the screen soundtrack, there's a cover of don't fear the reaper and it's really, but it's a really slow, sexy cover that it, by a guy named Gus, Gus black. Like no one's ever heard of him. Yeah. But it's him and a girl singing. It, it's kind of like a you and me vibe that I was telling you with the Pink Side Project, where it's just like really lightly, you know, light acoustic guitar and in them singing together. And it's so beautiful. And I'm like, I will play this on every single episode because it's so good. So, yes. Speaking should, of um, Holt, do too, she does a great cover of Fleetwood Max Gold Dust Woman. That was on one of my my mixtapes, a, a mixtape, mind you, where I recorded it off BRU, off the radio. Um, and you know what? It's amazing. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Spotify doesn't have that song. Oh, I've looked. Kidding? So what I want to say about Tori Amos is kind of on the th same theme of what we're talking about. I didn't like her in the 90s and I love her now. Like, I think because she wasn't like cool in the 90s, right? Like, like Nirvana. I, like, I think I didn't think she was cool because I was, you know, I was like angry music. Nirvana, and she was and like in a piano. Like, really? How, how cool is a piano? You know what I mean? And also... Also, she covers Smells Like Teen Spirit. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I didn't think she was cool, but I love her now, like, especially as someone that grew up playing piano, because I grew up playing piano since I was like six years old. Mm -hmm. Now I listen to her and I'm like, she is brilliant. I mean, she's a brilliant pianist. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. I don't even, and I think I only knew like that slow hit that she had. I One Flake Girl? Never no, one, no, I love no, Flake Girl. Love love we're playing that on a show because i <laughs> didn't know that song until a couple of years ago yeah. when i bought spotify and it came up and i was that's actually my goal in life is to be able to play that song on piano oh it's so, so good mm -hmm. okay let's talk about the breeders first i'm curious why you picked this song it's very interesting because it's only two minutes and the first half of it is really slow and then all of a sudden it's like another song and it gets really loud yeah. So the reason I picked that everybody, well, maybe not everybody, but like Cannonball was their hit off that album. Everybody knows that song. Why you? Coo coo. Cannonball. Everybody knows that song. Yeah. So yeah. this song actually kind of like segues into Cannonball and it's perfect the way it sounds in the album. But this album is so, so excellent because there's that song, which to me sounds really metal. Like I just love how it gets really heavy and it's just like, um, there's like a part where it, where the guitar is like, Ch -ch -ch, and it just it just has like such a heavy metal feel to me. Like I'm like, oh, this song's so metal. So the story behind this is I love the Breeders. I heard them on BRU, but then I remember my friend Crystal got me the CD off BMG. <laughs> 
Remember how you could pay a, a penny and get CDs or something like that? It was like for my birthday. Yeah. In like sixth or seventh grade, I was like, can you get me this, this Breeders album? So she got me um, Last Splash. But I remember the first time I put it in and I put that, that song on, I was like, whoa, because it was just so metal to me. You know what I mean? But yeah. the funny thing is, is there's so many songs on that album that are like straight up pop songs, like Divine Hammer. Have you ever heard that song, Divine Hammer? I'm just mm-hmm. looking for one divine hammer. I'd bang it all day. <laughs> like, yeah, no. divine hammer all day too. <laughs> but like, but, and it turns out, I guess that song's not even about that. It's supposed to be about religions, I guess. I don't know. But anyways, there's, there's like these really great pop songs, like driving on nine. And so that album is just so, um, I don't know, just like all encompassing of what that band can do. They can make really heavy songs. They can make really catchy, weird songs like Cannonball. And then, you know, um, there's one part on the album where I forgot what song it is, but they go, saw it on the wall. Motherhood means mental freeze. And you're like, what? (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, what does this mean? But it's just such a really great album. And the reason I picked that one is just because it just, it, it starts it off. It kicks it off and it's just, it's so uh, metal and it's just so heavy and it's just so exciting when you're, you know, for me anyway, when you're a young kid and you put it on, you're like, wow, you know what I mean? But then as you go on, like the album has pop songs, it's got really catchy songs. It's got more metal songs, weird songs, like just a really great album. Got it. Well, it's, I feel like you have a type with music like i can hear because because you like songs that are very like it's just like noise you know like Mm -hmm. it's messy it's chaotic Mm -hmm. it's like i feel like if i was going to guess your favorite nirvana song it would be like scentless apprentice or something that's really like loud and messy and you know just (laughs) but yeah really yeah Oh, that's funny. That's like my least favorite one. Of course, um, it's Rachel. <laughs> no, Polly. I'm like, that's so, so depressing. Okay, last band of the day, guys. Danielle loves Belly. I listened um, to this okay. song. I watched the video. I didn't like the song, I'll be honest, but I do. I liked the video because it kind of reminded me of Mary, Lane's, Mary, Mary Jane's Last Dance with Tom Petty when... <laughs> Kim Basinger is dead. And then all of a sudden she comes to life at the end. Mm-hmm. Cause there's a part where she like sits up, you know, I think she's supposed to be dead in the hospital and all of a sudden she sits up and it's, it's like that same lighting and vibe as like Mary Jane's last dance, that mm-hmm. video, if you've ever seen it. Um, but I also loved her outfit, like the sheer black blouse with the flowers on it. Like her outfit was just, cause I love, you know how like everyone wore like the sheer black blouses. Mm-hmm. Um, there, even like Alicia Silverstone and Clueless, there's a scene where she does. And so Tanya is wearing like this sheer black blouse with flowers on it. And I was like, oh, I love, like, I love her outfit. It was so cute. Um, yeah. So what do you have to say about this song? So Anything? that is the album I lived and died by. I love that song so much. I love the guitar riff in it. I just love, 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 love it. And of course, like I said before in the previous uh, show we did, is her voice is just like butter to me. It's so beautiful. She has the best voice. And <clears throat> that album is just so full of hook laden, like just pop songs. It's just, it's so catchy. And I just, you know, it's just very upbeat music. But yeah. the issue with that album, and it's such a shame, is they broke up right, like sh- shortly after that because it came out in, I think, 94 or 95. And the problem was, is that is when grunge was taking off. So nobody wanted to hear like these really catchy pop songs. They wanted to hear like, Mm. you know, um, Eddie Vedder or whatever. So it just, it kind of was bad timing on, you know, on their part. And it's just a shame because it's, it's, I guess years later, people were like, oh yeah, it it got, it had like mixed reviews. Nobody would, I loved it. I mean, I played that album over and over and over again, but I guess it came out to kind of mix reviews. But then of course, years later, everyone's like, eh, actually it was genius. And it's like, well, of course it was, it was great. You know what I mean? But yeah, yeah. Belly just, I, I don't know what it was. Um, you know, obviously after, um, throwing muses and all that, just catching on to belly, I was just like, oh yeah, this is the band. And that was the song super connected is like my favorite favorite song. I just love singing like the choruses and everything. Like I will, I still belt that song out when I hear it. I just, I can't not sing it. I love it. It's the best. Yeah. Yeah. I did. I never got into belly. I loved the throw and music song that you said. Yeah, like that was a great. That one. was so good. I still have it on like my Spotify playlist right now. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I never got into Belly. I probably would have to listen to a few more songs, I think, to make a full call on that. But they were big. I mean, they were on the, because I, I looked them up too. They were on the cover of Rolling Stone. That video had like hundreds of comments with people like these. This was one of my favorite songs in the 90s. Yeah. So I, I know pe- people love them. I just never really got into them. You never heard them, that but... song, Feed the Tree or Geppetto? I don't think so. Take your head off when you're talking to me and be there. No. Oh my gosh. Like they had a lot of good hits. So, okay. Yeah. I'll have to check. Maybe I know more and I just I don't remember. Do. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to, I'll have to look up. I don't know. We'll see. Um, all right. Well, thank you so much for coming on. You can find us at nineties obscurity on Instagram. If you want to email me, you can email nineties obscurity radio at Gmail and we'll see you next time. All righty.